I think the um, historically our understanding of inclusion would have been around um, addressing the needs of children with special needs uh, and families with those children and that's, that's sort of the level of inclusion that we, that we limited at that and everybody else was treated the same, in pretty much the same way. By investigating further the, um, the community itself that we realised that we had to have some understandings around um, low socioeconomic families who had some problems that many of us couldn't understand nor um, appreciate the difficulties that they face. So what we've tried to do in our Kids Matter ethos throughout the school is to encourage all the staff and all the community to value each other and not to judge, not to have any form of value judgments. If we're guided by the platform of respect for difference, that will navigate us through most things. If we also take on humility, we will get that we don't know everything and therefore we need to learn. And that will have us inquire into what difference is there represented here and therefore what does that require of us as the teachers to learn about ourselves. They all come with various different beliefs, values, ethics, you know, habits. It's, it's amazing. You know, we really actually celebrate the diversity here and with that comes the cost of needing to be mindful that what you do and what you say, you have to be sure that you're not actually interfering or um, offending anybody. You know, that what you believe is certainly not what maybe someone else believes. Can you please take your buddy with you and help them and read them a story, please? Nowadays, the nuclear family is no longer the, the absolute norm, or at least we, sh we should assume that it's not in the way that we talk about family when we're in schools. The experience of family is very different from home to home. And so inside of the concept of diversity, we're also thinking about different family structures. Who's the main caregiver? Who do you live with? Who parents you some of the time? Who parents you other times? These are kind of ways that we might talk with children. You know, some kids now have three or four parents in active caring roles. Some might even have five, some might have one. So we can take this on in schools by scrutinising those early texts that children read in the bottom end of primary school, the ones that always have a mommy and a daddy. We can look for a bit of diversity down there, so we set the kind of model that maybe the school does understand that there are different family compositions. We can take on different language when we speak with kids about home and about who might be living in a home and who might be caring for children. No one always assume the presence of a mother and a father, a biological mother and a biological father. So there's some languaging shifts that could occur in school and they can signify really important things to kids. They can signify to kids that just because you don't fit the standard norm, you don't have to hide that at this school. So we've heard stories in the past of children when they're asked to draw a picture of their family, drawing a fictional family because already at grade one they know what kind of family they're supposed to have and they're worried that they've got the wrong sort. So they'll draw a daddy where they don't have one. They'll leave out a sibling if they've got one too many. Or they'll put in a dog because they think maybe you should have one of those as well. So that's the, when, that happens when children pick up on the feeling that there is only kind of one right way to be around this school and it would be better if you are that way. It's really quite important that proactively schools take on work to make sure that little kids are not growing up with that kind of stifling sense about what their family is supposed to be like. If you have a really strong interest in participation, you'll ask things like who's participating, who gets a say, who comes, who doesn't. Who are we missing? Who are we not noticing? Who might feel threatened? Who might feel overlooked? And as soon as you ask those questions, of course, you begin to solve the problems that you find underneath them. And to be inside of these questions is to be at the heart of designing an inclusive school community, one that really embraces the diversity of challenge and richness that people provide by coming in and out of the school.